Um, I am going to talk today about immutable data and immutable JS. Um, so I'll share my screen now. Oh, that is, hold on, sorry. Okay. All right, so. All right, so we'll start with a short introduction on functional programming and immutab immutability before moving into what immutable JS is, why do we want to use immutable data and immutable JS, and then how to implement it. So like object-oriented programming, functional programming is a programming paradigm um, in which the main unit of computation is a function um, that must produce the same in output for the same input. Um, so some of the main features of functional programming are pure functions, um, which must return, again, the same value for the same arguments. They're free of side effects, which occur when a function modifies the state of something outside of its own scope, for example, Ajax calls. Um, the second is recursion, as we've done a lot of, um, is when a function calls itself. The third is composability, which refers to the ability to combine different functions into higher order functions. And the crux of this talk, immutability. Immutable values and data structures are those that once created don't ever change. Um, and then a funny little XKCD comic about Haskell and functional programming. Um, and I also learned while creating this talk that much of XKCD's website is actually written in Haskell. Um, so a quick question. What will the following code of block print? Does anyone? Have an answer. Um, okay. <laughs> the following block of code will print magic with a C and not a K, even though we tried to mutate the K on the end. Um, and that's because strings are immutable in JavaScript, as are numbers, booleans, and other primitive values. So for example, evaluating the expression one plus two doesn't actually change the, num the meaning or the value of the numbers one and two. It simply returns a new value, which is three. Um, however, unlike these primitives, objects are mutable in JavaScript. So in our array below, we are changing just the last element. And when we console log the original array, um, we have a, the, the same array with the last element changed. Um, so I guess the one caveat about that is that objects in JavaScript do have methods that adhere to the concept of immutability. So for example, the array prototype.map method will return a new array and leave the original unchanged. Um, some languages like Java were designed to adhere strictly to object-oriented programming, and other languages like Haskell are purely functional. Um, both luckily and unluckily for us, JavaScript supports both. Um, and that's great because that means we can be flexible, but also not so great because if we want to adhere to one or the other paradigm, we have to make a conscious effort to do so. And so that's kind of where Immutable JS comes in. Um, so Immutable JS is a JavaScript library that offers collections that are persistent and immutable. Persistent in the sense that even though the API is mutative, which means that you can change, for example, an element in an array. Um, every time you call that API method, it will leave the original unchanged and return a new collection. And immutable in the sense that once you've created a data structure or an object, you can never change it again. So we'll get to the mechanics of how to actually use the library in a bit, but just know for now that an immutable list is basically equivalent to a JavaScript array. So you can push, pop, et cetera. However, as you can see, Unlike with a JavaScript array, the original list that we had pushed the value for onto remains unchanged. And the, when we push the value for, the, it actually returns a new array, which is stored in the value list too. Um, so this is essentially how immutable's push function works. First, we make a deep copy of the list. And that means that we're actually creating an entirely new object rather than referencing it. Um, Second, we'll edit the copy by placing the value to be pushed at the end of the new list. And finally, we return the new list. So you might be wondering at this point, how is this different from us doing it manually by just copying arrays or using object.assign? 
And the answer to that is some very smart people found a powerful and really relatively performant way of doing this. So in our CS Saturday about functional programming, immutability in Git, Tom introduced the idea of structural sharing, which is the idea that when you make a new data structure, you're going to be recycling as much from the old one as you possibly can. Um, and so we're not just copying and pasting everywhere all the time, we're actually reusing the existing references. And the structure that makes this possible is called a directed acyclic, a, acyclic graph. Um, a graph is a structure that consists of nodes that are connected to each other. The directed part means that the connections between the nodes have a direction, so A pointing to B is different from B pointing to A. And it's acyclic, which means that no node can point back to itself. So if we start with the structure to the right, and we want to add the node H onto the existing B node, um, but we don't want to mutate B to do so. So we'll create a clone of it. And this is not simply a reference to B, it's an entirely new node that has all the properties of B with the addition of a reference to H. And so moving up our graph now, we want to reference B in node C, but again, we don't want to mutate it, so we'll make a clone of it. Um, nothing has changed about node A, so we can continue using it as the child node of C, as a child node of C. Um, and we, in order to complete our graph, we need to make one last connection. But again, we don't want to mutate it, so we'll clone it. Um, keep its reference to E, and that's our new graph. Out of our original seven nodes, we only had to clone three of them. Um, so imagine now that you have, for example, a thousand nodes instead of seven. If we were doing this manually, we'd have to clone every single one of those 1,000 nodes, which, as you can imagine, is probably not the most efficient thing in the world. Um, however, using structures like these, we reduce that work dramatically um, just by reusing those references. So why should I use immutable data and immutable JS? Um, first and foremost, it makes life slightly easier. Um, it's nearly impossible to accidentally mutate an immutable object and very easy to accidentally forget to clone a normal object. And so they give a strong guarantee that we're never muta mutating data in place. The second is that mutations can create side effects and side effects can create nasty bugs. And so by preventing mutations, we dramatically increase the predictability of our functions in our application. Methods that require a lot of state or that depend on side effects are, can be more difficult to test. And lastly, because our functions are mostly strictly input in and output out, there's a much better chance we'll be able to reuse them in the future. Other benefits include reduced memory usage thanks to structural sharing, change detection, mutation tracking, and persistent history. If you want to build an app, for example, with undo and redo features, that's almost trivial when using immutable data structures because you have a record of everything that happened. And lastly, while this isn't necessarily applicable to JavaScript, it's still very much worth noting that immutable data structures and values are thread safe. So when we have a, an application with multiple threads, Having them allows for a thread to act on data represented by immutable objects without worrying about what the other threads are doing. So you're, ne you're never changing something um, without other things knowing about it. Um, all right, so now that I've convinced you that immutable is great, how do I use it? So first, immutable JS is an NPM package created by Facebook. Um, so we're going to install and import it like we would any other package. The three most common data collections you might use are lists, maps, and nested objects. A list is basically a JavaScript array, um, and it will take either an array or a list of things, um, which we'll get to in a second. If you're providing immutable that list with an array, you'll just call the list method. You can also feed immutable.list a literal list of elements and use the list of method. Either way works. And if we try to access the first index as if it was a normal array here, we'll get undefined. And that's because we can't access properties on our list like we can with arrays and objects. Instead, we have to use the get and set methods. Um, so get simply takes an index as the argument and set takes the index as the first argument and the value that you want to change that index to as a second. Um, and you can see that list one still remains our original list and list two contains our, the modifications that we just made to it. So the next data collection will be a map, which is sort of the equivalent of a JavaScript object. Um, it takes a set of key value pairs and again like uh, the list method, you can just feed it a normal JavaScript object and it will automatically convert it. 
Um, so again, we can't use the object dot or bracket notation to access our properties. Instead, we still need to use get and set. Um, so we use map.get and a string to access a value. And in order to change a value, we would, again, the first argument would be the key and the second would be the value that we want to change it to. Um, and again, you can see that the original map has not changed, but the second has. And so the final uh, collection that we'll be talking about is nested objects. Immutable JS data structures like list and map impart the immutability feature only to the first level of the list or the map. So if we have nested objects and want the inner objects to also be immutable, we can do one of two things. The first is to explicitly define each data structure. So in this first code block, um, we are calling map on the overall object and then list on our array of dogs and map again on the objects that are inside of that. Um, the second option, which in my opinion is just much easier, is to call immutable.fromjs, which deeply converts JavaScript objects to maps and JavaScript arrays to lists. So it basically does the above for you. Um, and again, we can't use uh, we can't use the normal dot and bracket notation, notation which maybe can get kind of sticky when, we, when we're using nested objects. Um, as you can see on this first line, we have to do three dot gets um, just to get to the favorite food of our first dog, um, or second dog, excuse me. And instead of doing that, Immutable provides uh, the methods get in, set, and set in. Um, just for nested objects. So we feed it an array of the kind of trail of properties that we want, and then um, it accesses it that way. To set the value, um, we can do a very similar thing where we feed it the array of the uh, key that we want to edit, and then the second argument is the value that we want to edit it to. And so calling, so there are situations where instead of just setting a value for a key, um, we want to actually run a function through it. Um, and so in cases like these, we can call update or update in, um, depending again, whether you want to access a nested object or not. Um, for this example, we're using, we're getting the array or the list dogs and then mapping over it to update every value of the favorite food to uppercase. Um, and Immutable.js includes other data structures such as an order map, which is different from JavaScript because we don't have orders in our uh, objects. Um, set, ordered set, stack, and record. And once I send these out, there are a couple of different resources that you can use um, in order to learn and practice. Um, when you do visit the official documentation, you'll find that they're a little lackluster. <laughs> and to make things even more, even better to go through, a lot of their examples are actually in TypeScript. Um, so if you're not familiar with that, that can be a pretty big challenge. Um, so instead of learning from the documentation, I've officially named another site the unofficial documentation. Um, it's a great thorough primer of the basics and they kind of market themselves as an introduction with examples written for humans. Um, the, there, someone made an immutable REPL um, and so it's all the abilities of immutable JS without having to set up Webpack and anything else you need. Um, and there's also an immutable JS object formatter um, which makes immutable data in the console much less annoying in, to access and read. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is just kind of another to-do app that I created to practice all of this. And for example, to access these properties, we have, so this is our, our map data structure of our state. And then in order to get to our state, this is our state right here. In order to get to the first uh, element of our state, we need to go through all of this. And so these are the properties that are there. And each of these is a map, which means we need to go even further into here. Um, you can see how this would get really, really annoying after a while. 
Um, so somebody created a handy little Chrome extension to help with that. Um, and that's that. <laughs>